G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, continuing the series where I do individual videos on 2024 draft prospects. If you'd like to see other players I've done in this series, click in the top right corner, you'll find the playlist of every other player I've done in this series. Members of this channel do get early access. So today, we are talking about Sid Draper. Sid Draper was one of my early contenders for being my favorite of the draft class. Uh, I suppose at the time, West Coast held pick three and I thought he was a live option for us to draft. But he was probably my preference for us and we'll get into exactly why. So he is fairly small midfielder at 180 centimeters, but that small frame doesn't really indicate the sort of player that he is. He's a very tough, competitive, aggressive style midfielder with great leadership credentials. And whichever club picks him, there is a chance that they will have drafted their future captain. So the story of Sid Draper and his trajectory has been interesting. He was an amazing bottom major last year. He won all Australian honours and was considered to be South Australia's best player as a 16 year old. He won South Australia's MVP award averaging 25 disposals, half of those contested possessions, seven inside 50s and four clearances across those four games. Bearing in mind, he didn't even turn 17 until after that kind of order ended. Unfortunately, the tale for him is that in this year, he was battling injury for quite a lot of the first half of the year. And there are some similarities here to Finn O'Sullivan, two prospects that are gun midfielders with great AFL applicable talent, who had great bottom age years and a great profile going into this year that just couldn't quite get fully fit. So to be specific, I believe there was a knock to his knee and a hip flexor during the preseason, and then he missed a whole chunk of the early part of the season with a shin stress fracture, which is not a nice injury. However, to to his credit, he showed great resilience to bounce back from that, and he still won all Australian honours this year in the carnival, averaging 21 disposals, eight contested possessions, 3.7 clearances, and a team high five and a half score involvement. So his numbers were down on last year, but he still did a pretty good job of making a good account of himself. So if there were doubts about Draper's performance in that carnival, I think he kind of put them to bed with how he finished the season. He went back to the Sandful, playing in the men's competition, and produced his best form of the season. He averaged 22 and a half disposals, 4.7 clearances, and 6.2 two tackles in the Sandful competition. Then unfortunately, when the draft combine rolls around, he's got a back injury, so didn't test. However, he interviewed and apparently impressed clubs from all reports. I did manage to find on Rookie Me Central, they said he posted the top agility test time nationwide during the 2023 preseason with 7.8 seconds. So you can kind of tell the way he plays. That is validated by that testing number. So let's describe him as a player and summarize his strengths and weaknesses. So like I said, he's not particularly tall, but he's a tough, uncompromising, aggressive style midfielder, great agility, great speed, plays with that aggression, that tenacity, that outstanding work rate to really surge the ball forward and of course win clearances in the first place. He's got great clean hands in tight, you know, which is a pretty necessary skill for an inside midfielder and his ability to get the ball from the inside to the outside is outstanding. Even though he hasn't been fully fit this year, I mean, that was probably a reason why he couldn't absolutely showcase his best in the championship because repeat sprint efforts, getting from contest to contest, these are things that Draper is good at, being aggressive with the ball as well. He's not one of those midfielders that just completely plays within himself. He is very proactive in trying to get the ball forward. Like I alluded to before as well, leadership, professionalism, these are also things you associate with Sid Draper, which make him very, very draftable. He's a kid determined to get the best out of himself and has had leadership roles along the way. So let's talk about a couple of downsides to Sid Draper. Um, to be honest, I think he's an absolute gun, but you'd have to say that durability would be at least a concern. Now, just because a player has an injury interrupted top age year in their under 18s year, does not mean they're going to be a huge injury liability for the rest of their career. However, it is a little bit concerning. He's picked up little niggles here and there that are different every time. And it just hasn't allowed him at times to play his absolute best footy. However, I then would point to his resilience, the ability to get back and then also play at the top level against seasoned bodies and perform to an outstanding level. But nonetheless, durability has to be a question mark there. The other one is end product. It's a little bit unsurprising. He's a very inside, uncompromising, aggressive style midfielder. He's willing the ball out. He's getting first hands. He's getting the ball from inside to outside. He's running from contest to contest. He's surging the ball forward. And as such, sometimes his end product can be a little bit off. Because he plays in such an aggressive nature and it's such a high speed sometimes that results in his ball use being off or mistakes being there but he does definitely have some hurt factor because he's constantly trying to hurt the opposition if that makes sense so whether that's a decision making issue or perhaps it's composure could that be fixed at the next level even if you accept that perhaps his decision making can be off there is enough that he does right that makes him a very valuable prospect he also doesn't kick a lot of goals for a midfielder but that does feel a little bit nitpicky at this rate so let's talk about his draft range again this will be interesting i have seen some differing opinions on this. Now, let's start with what is the earliest he could go. I don't think pick one to Richmond is 
seriously on the cards here. And, and North Melbourne currently hold pick two. Now I have heard through the grapevine, North Melbourne really like him as a prospect. However, as it currently stands and with everything we're hearing, it seems like they're more likely to go tall and perhaps shuffle around picks to make that happen. So that the outcome of them drafting Sid Draper on the night at this stage seems very unlikely. So let's keep moving down. Carlton at pick three is potentially a live option. However, in my opinion, that probably relies on Finno Sullivan not being available. So in the hypothetical scenario that Richmond hold pick two, which seems less likely than likely at this point, then Carlton have the choice between Jagger Smith and Sid Draper. I think Sid Draper could come into calculations as early as Carlton's pick three, which could become pick four on the night. Past that, you've got the Adelaide Crows. Now there is such a strong connection between Draper and the Adelaide Crows that I don't really know if it is true that Adelaide are all over him. It has been suggested for to be honest, this entire season, there has been a strong suggestion that Adelaide really likes Sid Draper as a prospect. Now, how much of that is grounded in reality? I don't really know. How much of that is just linking the South Australian product to the South Australian club? It certainly happens in Western Australia, but it could also be true in this case. And, you know, if it was up to me, I think Adelaide should draft Sid Draper, knowing who is likely to be available. I think he suits them pretty well. I, I realize that Adelaide might look for a point of difference. So if it's the scenario where Adelaide are on the clock and they think maybe we go for the taller goal-kicking midfielder of a Harvey Langford or something like that. You'd have to consider that a possibility. So if he does slip through past the Crows, it's interesting to consider where he might go next. I did see a mock draft that had him at pick 10 to St Kilda, which I believe would actually be their first selection after bids happen. So we're effectively talking about pick seven there. I suppose that's possible. You'd have to get through the Adelaide Crows, the Melbourne Footy Club, and Richmond's second selection, unless it gets traded up. But let's assume it doesn't, it would be Richmond there. I'd be pretty surprised if he gets that late, personally. I think Adelaide is the most likely candidate. I think it's possible Carlton take him. Failing that, I honestly think Melbourne should just take him. So there's a fairly narrow range there. Being conservative though, let's say his range is probably pick four, assuming an Ashcroft bid comes first, to about pick nine or 10. But in my opinion, it's probably more likely to be Carlton, Adelaide or Melbourne, but that is just opinion. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of Sid Draper as a prospect. Would you like your club to draft him? I know I'd like West Coast to draft him at pick 15. Now, but let me know what you think and uh, let me know in the comments anyone else you want to see in this series. Tomorrow, you will get Finn O'Sullivan. But for now, I thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.